All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mars is about to enter the most treacherous Gandanta zone. What is Gandanta? Gandanta zone is the last degree of a water sign and the first degree of a fire sign. So we know after water signs, fire signs come, right? So, for example, after Scorpio, which is a fire sign, we uh, which is a water sign, there is uh, Sagittarius, which is a fire fire sign, right? So water, then fire, destruction, and then there is creation. So Mars is now in, uh, he's about to enter the Gandanta zone. Now, which Gandanta am I talking of? I'm talking of this Gandanta exactly, the Scorpio Sagittarius. This Gandanta zone is a very... It's a very treacherous zone. Why do I say this? Because Scorpio is where all the poison is, you know, poison of the universe. <laughs> and then spirituality is there in Sagittarius. Mula Nakshatra begins in Sagittarius, okay? So needless to say that most of the people in this world only turn to God after, after they get... <laughs> You'll very rarely find, uh, I mean, you can still find, but you will still very rarely find people who you may say, oh, yeah, everything's fine with my life. You know, my health is great. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best career of my life. I'm having the best marriage. I'm having the best uh, luxuries. I'm having the best of the best of all. And then I'm coming to spirituality to turn to God. Oh, wow. I wish that happened. <laughs> but it, it happens uh, sometimes, but for most of the people, as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, now, four types of people come come to me, right? So if you know that, which I'm sure you know, then please write down in the comments. And please also let me know how are you feeling uh, about this Gandanta zone. Uh, many people have messaged me, emailed me by saying, you know, they are feeling a bit anxious with this energy, you know, what's going on. And they want to know what's exactly happening. So it's important for us to decipher. So Mars is in this Gandanta zone. Now what is Scorpio? Scorpio is the original eighth sign. Eighth house, as much as you may like it or not, is the graveyard where things end. Okay. Now, eighth house is not the physical graveyard. The physical graveyard is the twelfth house. Okay. Which is actually Pisces. <laughs> but eighth house is like being in a graveyard so you you are alive but you are going to a graveyard to a smashar to a crematorium how do you feel right uh, well uh, <laughs> we know how that energy is right so therefore any planet if is placed in the eighth house or the eighth lord or in scorpio can give you feelings of being uh, of like being in the graveyard uh, during that planet's dasha, so it's important that you address that. Now, what happens now when Mars enters this? So Mars, as you know, rules two houses: Sagittarius, uh, sorry, Aries, and then that's the Mool Trikon, and then there is uh, Scorpio, which is also the own sign. So now, depending on your uh, ascendant you have to see where these two signs are falling. So Aries is number one, Scorpio is number eight. So therefore, if you can uh, identify which houses Mars rules as per your ascendant, which is very easy, then you can get an idea of what this transit could do to you, which means this transit will most likely end certain things uh, maybe in a painful way, in a way that you or me don't like and then it will bring out new things okay so therefore uh, it's very important that we understand uh, this Gandanta zone and uh, as you know Gandanta also means you know these knots which are tied so Lord Krishna also says this in the Bhagavad Gita like you know these gunas are like the ropes you know which tie up right uh, tie up our life you know through the subtle body with the habits basically so therefore if mars is ruling a provident house in your chart which could be the case for many ascendants provident planet means if he's your lagna lord he's your ninth lord fifth lord or tenth lord these four 
are the most prominent houses, the first, fifth, ninth, and tenth. So please make sure you take care of the lords of these four houses. All right. So make sure things that they represent are doing good in your life or you are paying attention to them at least. So even if Mars is not ruling these houses, Mars may rule some other house in your chart. So you have to you have to check. See, Scorpio is the sign of punishment. It's the sign of attachment. But why does it punish? Because uh, it's the sign of attachment. So uh, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the material nature, the body is temporary, right? You are not this body, you are spirit soul. Krishna says this, that uh, we are not this cross body, this subtle body, we are Atma, Satchidananda Rupa, right? So therefore, when we forget this completely and we are madly obsessed with the things of this world. I'm not saying obsessed. I'm not saying it as I'm saying madly, crazily, fanatically obsessed and attached with something. Then it's like the scorpion is waiting. <laughs> so then what happens? We kind of start to identify with this material world. We start to believe that, oh, what I'm seeing is actually the reality, is actually the truth, but that may not be the case. Because uh, we are identifying ourselves with the body, and because of that, uh, we think this is related to us. You know, like this person or this possession, position or uh, this object is related to us, but actually it is not, okay? But that's how we think because of our attachment to the body. And because of this, when that thing is taken away from us, we get suffering. So therefore, wherever Mars, whichever houses Mars is ruling your chart, it may happen depending on your dasha, especially if your 8th house or 12th house is activated in your dasha, maha dasha or antar dasha, it is possible that certain things may be taken away from you and that may be very painful, okay? So then what's the solution? Do you just sit and keep crying, oh, this is gone, that is gone, he's gone, she's gone, they are gone, um, it's all over. No, you don't sit and cry. Well, of course, eighth house is the graveyard, so there will be tears, okay? We can't. We can't just artificially say, oh, what is all this? You know, this is all negative stuff you are talking, you know. Only speak of positive things, you know. But it doesn't work, you see. Life has challenges, and it's good if we admit them at the earliest. So if you have, if you face in the upcoming days of this transit that things are about to be taken away from you or things are inevitably taken away from you, then what should you do? Well, you should turn to the Bhagavad Gita. You should read the Bhagavad Gita because the Bhagavad Gita will tell you that, hey, my dear sir, my dear madam, Krishna is telling this a thousand, thousand, thousand million times that you are not this body, this body that you feel and you see is not who you are. So stop identifying beyond a certain extent. Of course, ideally, we should have no identification with material things. But that's not possible. That is only possible at a very high stage when you are like very elevated, you know, very exalted. But even at a mundane level, even if you are not very elevated or exalted spiritually, even then, if you are a normal person, then also it is possible that you have attachments, but that is in a limited, finite uh, amount, right? So it depends on the quantity and the quality of attachments, of course. So if we have attachments which are uh, dragging us towards sinful habits, then we need to give up these attachments. You know, They may be anybody, our uh, friends or colleagues or anybody, you know, because they will all do no good to us. And apart from that, uh, if we are feeling that uh, we are becoming too attached to something, then we need to practice a bit of detachment. Now, how do you get detached? Not by superficially telling, oh, I'll be detached, you know, this will happen, that will happen. No, you can't be detached superficially. It's just not possible. So, if you want to cultivate detachment, the best way to do it is by cultivating attachment to God. So, this transit, if it takes away things from you, then please do spiritual practices Read the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, read the Ramayana, read the Mahabharata, associate with the spiritual community, go to some satsang program nearby your house, 
and uh, meet great personalities there, meet sadhus, rishis. Of course, you may not find a rishi, but you will find somebody at least. And then when you learn from them, you get enlightened, you gain, get higher taste, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, he says, you know, that when, when you get the higher taste, you know, param drishtvani vartate, then you can control all these lower things, okay? So therefore, if you feel that uh, you are having terrible attachments in life and you can not do anything, then maybe it's time to cultivate some attachment uh, to God, to Lord Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Ete cha amsa kala pumsam krishna astu bhagavan swayam. So if we do this on a regular basis, we chant his holy names, we read the Bhagavad Gita every day, we read the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, we associate with uh, devotees of Lord Krishna, we take Krishna Prasad every day, and then we will gradually purify our consciousness and we will go from, as they say, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, right? From darkness, you go to light, all right? So, therefore, it's very important that you don't just dismiss this as, you know, superficial, positive or, you know, negative placement. You know, understand that the problems of this world, they have a purpose. The purpose is to refine our sinful desires and our materialistic consciousness. Maybe in a way that we don't like. <laughs> okay, so therefore, please understand, if you have terrible attachments, very serious attachments, then maybe uh, things may be taken away from you, okay? And if that happens, you may cry for some time. It's very painful. It's like a surgery. It's like operation. It's not easy. It's like, you no, know, it's cut. It's very painful. It's bleeding. The false ego is bleeding. You know, it's like blood is oozing out. But what is important is that at the end, we look towards the source of all happiness, which is Krishna, because the Vedanta Sutra says the absolute truth is also known as Rasa Vaisaha, you know, it's like the source of all Rasas. You know? And Lord Ram, as you know, he's, the word Ram himself means Sarveshu Ramante Tiramaj, which is source of all pleasure. So when you try to go close to them, then you'll realize, uh, yes, at the end, anyways, everything will be taken away from me, right? So how does it matter now if I have something or not? Of course, that doesn't mean we just or dismiss everything as uh, illusion or something like that. We take responsibility for our position. If you are an employee, you do your job. Like Arjuna, he was a Chatriya, he was a great devotee of Krishna, he was the recipient of the Bhagavad Gita, but at the same time he was a Chatriya, and as his duty he fought this battle of Kukshetra and he punished the Kauravas, right, for the things that they did to Draupadi and to so many other people and including themselves, okay. So therefore, do your duties, don't become irresponsible in the name of becoming spiritual, but do not also just remain a responsible materialist in the name of materialistic responsibility, materialistic goals and ambitions, and do not just leave your spiritual life, all right? So wish you all the best, and as usual, if you're new, then please like this video, or, and also subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, and if you Want a consultation for me? My website is down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you.